Now, some of you may know that I am doing a DPhil or a PhD at the University of Oxford. And I have been a student for over two decades of my life. And one question that I get asked all the time or a type of question I get asked all the time is what advice would I give to people who are starting university right now or perhaps even starting school right now? So people who are in their student phase of life, right, perhaps in their prime or just at the beginning and as someone who is toward the tail end of it and this is really the only life I have seen, I, I feel like I have some insights and some uh, advice that I keep giving out all the time whenever asked of course. If you'd like to hear my tips on on how to live a good student life and what some things that I would know and some tactics and strategies and insights then this video is for you my friend. My first tip is this health is the first priority. When we are students there's so much new and interesting things happening. There are student societies that you could be a part of, there is clubs, you could become a student representative or you could study more, you could take more classes, you could do some sports and with all of that it is possible that health might take a bit of a back seat. There's so many new and interesting things happening that we may feel that hey look this is the prime time of life and it's not even that you ignore health, it's not that you try to avoid health but you sort of ignore Ignore it. It, you, it sort of gets on the back seat and that's something for me and for many of my friends has caught up and uh, if you know a little bit about me I have had massive health challenges when I was in my undergraduate and so did many of my peers and one thing that I would like to tell myself going back in the day is to prioritize health even more and be a little less arrogant for lack of a better word for uh, for knowing what health is like back in the day i thought you know if you go to the gym a little bit if you run around a little bit that's that's enough for health whereas now i understand health in a much more comprehensive and solid way i think of sleep as part of health i think of exercise as part of health i think of my diet as part of the health and it's, it's not about being shredded, it's not about good looks, although healthy people often tend to have radiant looks and attractive looks. It's not just that, it's about caring about your own body, it's about breathing and it's about feeling alive in your body. And I feel if I were to go back, I would tell myself to prioritize health A and, and be more humble about learning more about health and learning more about how do I use this body in and treat this body in the best way possible. So health is the first priority. And by the way, when I say health, I equally mean mental health. Now of course physical health is quite important but equally important is mental health. Now this is something that I did right. Throughout my undergrad mental health was something that I deeply studied. It ultimately led me to pursue psychology uh, more formally. I also had a lot of experiences caregiving and spending time with people who are undergoing challenges with their mental health. So when I say health is a priority, mental health absolutely is part of it and something that everyone should prioritize. So I've made multiple videos on therapy. I have a whole podcast called Understanding Emotions and it is my main gig in life. And so when I say and recommend that you take care of health, I also mean very deeply that you also take care of your mental health and not treat it as this foreign object separate from health. Okay, number two is develop a productivity system. When you are in school, you're going to be taking a lot of classes, you're going to write a lot of exams and you're going to be graded. And it is quite easy to fall into the trap of thinking that if you did not perform as well, then it's just something wrong with you. You are lacking in some way or others are just fundamentally better than you. And for the life of me, that is not the case. A lot of times it's not about natural talent. It's not about abilities and skills, but it's about your systems. I personally believe a person with better systems is going to beat the person who is just working brute force. And the reason for that is systems are often developed strategically. So I highly recommend developing a productivity system of your own. Like at the very least, have a calendar, know how to block time, know how to put time in a calendar. So so that you're mentally offloading all of the schedule that your mind has to keep track of. You just have it on paper or you have it on Google calendars or Apple calendars or something like that. So it's something I highly recommend. Develop a productivity system. When I was in my undergrad, I exclusively used this app called OmniFocus. And I can remember this feeling of absolute calm that I had when I used that app frequently. Now, of course, the trap with productivity is, is just you just end up spending time researching about productivity and studying productivity, but you never 
actually be productive. So of course, when I say develop a system, I don't mean spend all your time in the system. Of course not. But develop a system that helps you study. It helps you perform without having that pressure of deadlines and things like that. And that is going to be, at least for me, it gave me a lot of mental sanity. These days I use Notion to manage my PhD. I don't use OmniFocus anymore. And I use Obsidian to write down notes. And I use Apple Notes to write down more quick type notes. So the videos that I record, the bullet points for it, I record in Apple Notes. So this is uh, the second thing I recommend, which is develop a productivity system. Okay, point number three is I would suggest that you actively seek rejection. That's correct actively seek rejection and this is honestly more of an advice for the younger me than it is for you but i do suspect a lot of you who are watching this would be more on the shy side or perhaps you are not as confident or you want to put yourself out there and what i found is when i was growing up and in my undergrad i had a lot of fun i performed very well in academics and i was in dean's list for basically every institution that i attended but the downside of a lot of my approach to academics and college life was a lot of despair and the reason for that is what I understand now which is I didn't put myself out there as much as I would have liked to. Now I did things that I was very good at so I was good at leadership and stuff so I formed organizations I added hopefully a lot of joy to people's lives uh, but I, I was not as good as doing things that would make me uncomfortable so if I wanted to ask someone out that would scare the f out of me and if I wanted to um perhaps start something like this, like talking to a camera or start a podcast and be, be more out there or perhaps run for the student government and things like that. that. That would be devastating for me because I was so scared of rejection. And rejection is something that we are all going to face in one way or the other. And the best way to I find to get over rejection are two things. One is to actively seek rejection, which is my tip. And the second is to be more self-compassionate when you do meet rejection. So if you are interested in how I handled reaction there's many many podcast episodes I have but if I were to go back and give myself one advice if it were one key advice for myself it would be to go out and seek rejection actively there's nothing is going to collapse the world is going to be just fine if I get rejected and uh, I'm going to grow and be immune to it therefore more confident as a result a lot of the reason why I am able to shoot videos like this is in the last couple of years I really went out and sought as many rejections as I could as practice. So I literally went out three times a week like a workout and I talked to people and I recorded videos like this and got rejected to the extent that that circuit in my brain is relatively quiet now. Like it's quiet to a healthy extent. It's not off. I'm very sensitive to negative comments and things like that. But I also know at the bottom of my heart that that's not a threat. I'm not endangered if I get rejected or if someone thinks negatively of me. So that would be my tip. If you're a student, then I would invite you and encourage you from the bottom of my heart to seek rejection in areas that you want to grow in. Of course, not in random areas. I'm not saying be foolish, but in areas that you want to grow in, that you want to develop confidence in. I absolutely invite and encourage you, my friend, to seek rejections. All right, the next advice that I would give you is create and maintain connections. So this could be friendships, that could be relationships with your teachers and tutors and professors. Uh, this could be romantic relationships. This could be relationship with like peripheral staff that work in your college or university or what have you. And the reason why I say that is because the quality of your relationship is quite closely related to the quality of your life. We know that after years and years of psychology study, this is one thing that I think I did pretty well, to be honest. I did invest a significant amount of my time with my friends, with my colleagues, with my teachers. And I tried my best to learn a lot from other people, to be in their presence and to develop lifelong friendships. So even today, the, the kinds of friendships I've formed at universities, they still last a decade or five years or 10 years down the line. And those were the absolute best moments if I were to think back to my college and university and school lives. So I highly recommend that you create and maintain connections. And I think this is going to be a huge source of joy in your life. Now, the specific amount of connections you have and the number and all of that, that is, I think, personality dependent. But I think extremes are 
unhealthy on either side so i recommend that you seek and maintain connections and that be a priority for you but you yourself figure out what is your specific personality structure and your specific need and seek as many or as little as you would like okay next one is a bit of an intellectual one and it's something that i've only realized with hindsight and that is your views are not final my lesson for you and for my younger self would be your views are not final often times when we are at university or perhaps late in school high school we start to develop views about the world we start to read more we start to get experiences and accumulate experiences and as a result it's quite easy to build like a solid sense of self and a solid sense of what my identity and my views are and what i have found over the years of being a student is my views have developed and matured a lot and it no longer has that quality of like god tightening that kind of thing and dude don't get me wrong it's, it's totally appropriate in certain situations to have strong views and to oppose injustice where it's merited of course that is true but at the same time i personally looking back realized that i was just naive and immature in so many ways and it's not that i was wrong per se but i had the sense that my view is the correct view and you know it's quite consistent with teenage life i'm not like self hating about it but just i think that if i had no and if i had the insight that my views are going to mature and i'm going to be able to think in different perspectives as i grow older and i'm be, i'll be able to hold multiple perspectives simultaneously and that the people who tend to have kind of opposite views of me also have good intentions i would have had a much more peaceful and a much more i would say wholesome and more pleasurable experience of being at college so case in point let's let's talk about mental health it was something that i was absolutely passionate about when i was uh, early in my undergrads so or late in my that's even and in india where i was there was a lot of environment around me which was like mental health is not real this is just something in your mind so even something that sounds more scientific that it's just a chemical imbalance and none of that is true no at least not in its entirety and probably not even it's a trivial nature even now but i do see people who oppose me or people who have a different perspective as coming from a different upbringing and a different background and i'm able to hold that like when my parents were growing up for example that generation mental health was not their priority for good reasons because they had to put food on their table because they had 10 other people to look after and i can totally get why looking after their feelings was not their priority and it's something that's the problem for me to solve and a cause for me to champion but I don't look at people who did oppose be it establishment like doctors and teachers or my family who did not understand mental health today I view it as a lack of understanding not as a lack of good intentions and that flip is just so important for having that conversation and then bringing them on board with your cause this is a time where you will develop views and that's absolutely wonderful and I highly highly encourage independent thinking and at the same time I would invite you to know that That there's so much more that you're going to read there's so much perspective that you're going to have that the iron grip that you might have on your views right now may be relaxed and that is it helps me sleep uh, sanely at night all right the next one i'm going to talk about is seek mentorship Now again in my teenage phase or when people are teenagers even now it's quite a well known phenomenon that you go through a bit of a rebel sort of a phase and again that's probably healthy it's part of healthy development uh, but at the same time i feel the maximum growth i have had is when i've actively sought help and i've actively sought mentorship the thing is this we all all are going to make several mistakes in life we are all going to fail in several ways in life and that's not a bad thing that's quite normal and quite natural except we want to minimize those mistakes and we want to not make mistakes to the extent that we get in trouble with the law or we get in trouble with some disciplinary matter so we don't want to make mistakes so big that is going to leave some sort of a stamp on you or you're going to regret that heavily throughout your life and what i have found is that the best way to go through this learning curve is to have mentors now mentors could take many shapes and forms like it could be your professors or teachers but it could also be like a therapist or a trusted guide that your point or it could be a coach as you 
assuming they are well selected and they are mature not someone who's just calling themselves a life coach of course not as i said i've grown up with a fair amount of social anxiety and i had a very sharp climb out of it within a matter of months uh, when i sought mentorship and it just like cemented the power of a good mentor in my mind so i highly recommend that whatever area you are interested in is you talk to your mentors often there are so many people around you who could advise you there'll be your teachers there'll be your friends there'll be your colleagues even friends can be good mentors because i believe everyone has something to teach so highly recommend that we seek and you seek some mentors uh, as you go around in your student life All right, the final point I'm going to make is adopt a leadership mindset. Now what do I mean by that? Again, uh, when you're going through student life, you're going to develop views and you're going to understand the world better and you're going to read these beautiful texts uh, which tell you about the world whatever your field is. Uh, and a lot of times what might happen is they might develop a sense of helplessness or even perhaps a sense of bitterness in you. So for example, when you read a lot of literature, uh, especially one that challenges and questions establishments and discrimination and so on, uh, it's quite easy to get bitter about it and it's quite easy to get uh, the sense that you're living in a hostile world and you're living in a world that is absolute discriminatory and evil really and again i'm not saying discrimination does not exist i'm not saying injustice does not exist of course it does and something needs to be done about it and people are doing things about it and if you want to do things about it absolutely you're welcome to do that but at the same time if you move on with the mindset that the world is evil then that's going to have a negative impact on your mental health and it's going to affect your ability to care for the cause that you do care for so this is what i mean by holding multiple perspectives yes that there is injustice in the world yes that there is discrimination in the world but also we are living in a time in which uh, the world hasn't been better we are living in a time we are living in such material and abundance of resources that even the kings just 100 years ago did not have of course we need to fight against societal injustices of course we need to stick our voice out and we need to put ourselves out there and at the same time we are living in a time which has been better than never in history and if you are listening to this on the internet i'm confident you are living in a place where the abundance is crazy now of course there is parts of the world even today where discrimination is to the ex- extreme and um, poverty is to the extreme and people don't have access to safe and clean drinking water that's that's very unfortunate the reason why i say adopt a leadership mindset is the way you not get bitter about it and you get empowered by that knowledge is by thinking that you have a role to play is by thinking that it's not someone around you who is going to do something about it but it's going to be you like for me it's the area of psychology mental health neuroscience emotional intelligence that kind of thing i do feel that sense of responsibility and leadership that if not me then who like i've spent my entire life so far thinking about these things and i do take leadership and responsibility for that by putting myself out there in this way and for you it might be this or it might be some other cause but instead of thinking you know just that the world is doomed and the world is evil i would be like okay this is this is my cause and this is something that i am going to um, lead if the buck stops with me it's it's not about blaming it's not about outer external hate or despair but it's about i take responsibility to 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 an extent not about everything of course that would be over responsibility but i am a leader here and i am an agent which can change things and of course we know from psychology that a sense of agency is vital for mental health like there are several studies that show that people who have a sense of agency a strong sense of agency uh, have better mental health outcomes broadly speaking One of the ways you have agency is you feel that you are a leader. So, this is what my tips would be. I hope you found them useful. This is what I would like to know. I would have liked to know rather a few years ago or maybe even a decade ago. And so, hopefully my journey and the things that I have learned from my mentors and from my experience uh, is going to save you from some learning and some uh, roadblocks and hopefully you will have a better, more pleasant, more wholesome, more healthier student life as a result. Sankalp signing off.